We now move on to an application of linear differential equations. So this is called a mixing problem. We're going to let S of T be the amount of salt in a tank that contains 100 liters of liquid. So imagine that we have a large tank. And inside this tank, there's an amount of salt and um, an amount of water. Okay, the total solution is going to be 100 liters of liquid. We're going to pour in salt water containing 50 grams per liter of salt. So we're going to pour in some salt water at a rate of 4 liters per minute. And then we're going to have something that kind of stirs this tank constantly so that it makes a well-mixed solution. And then we're gonna have some of that well-mixed solution drain out of the tank. Again, at a rate of four liters per minute. And so what we wanna do is we wanna keep track of the amount of salt in this tank. Okay, so the change in salt is going to be the rate that salt comes in minus the rate that salt goes out. So the rate that salt goes in, well, the salt goes in in a mixture of 50 grams per liter at a rate of 4 liters per minute. And so we can see here that the liters would cancel and we have a rate in grams per minute of salt going in. Now the salt is going to come out as a well-mixed solution. So the well-mixed solution is going to be S grams divided by 100 liters. Okay, it's going to be well mixed, so we'll take the total amount of salt and then divide it by the volume of the tank. So S over 100 grams per liter. That's also going to go out at the same rate of 4 liters per minute. That is important because then the volume of this tank never changes. It's always going to be 100 liters because 4 liters are going in per minute and 4 liters are coming out per minute. Again, you're going to see that the liters cancel, and then we're going to get the amount of salt in grams per minute. Okay, so what we have is, is that DSDT is going to be 200 grams per minute coming in minus, looks like S over 25 grams per minute coming out. Okay, so... Now, the initial amount of salt, I'm just going to call the initial amount of salt S0. And we want to solve this di differential equation. So our differential equation is ds dt. Okay, I'm going to say plus 1 over 25 times S. And that's going to equal uh, 200. Now, there are actually two ways that we can solve this differential equation, okay? Because this is one of those differential equations that's of the form y prime plus ay equals b. And we, we solved this differential equation before, okay? And we got a formula for the solution. But since this is going to be a lesson on integrating factors, I'm going to go ahead and do this problem using integrating factors so that we can have some practice. Okay, so we need to find the integrating factor. Integrating factor mu of t in this case is going to be e to the antiderivative of p of t. So this is going to be p of t in this case is 1 over 25 dt. So it looks like this is going to be e to the 1 over 25 times t. Okay, 
So that means we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the 1 over 25 times t. So we're going to get e to the 1 over 25 t ds dt plus 1 over 25 times e to the 1 over 25 times t times s is going to equal 200 e to the 1 over 25 t. Okay. So the left-hand side, we can rewrite using the product rule. So that's going to be ddt of e to the 1 over 25 times t times s. Okay. And uh, the right-hand side is going to stay the same as 200 e to the 1 over 25 times t. I'm going to anti-differentiate both sides. So I'm going to actually, what I might do in this case is I'm going to integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate from t from, I'm going to let this start at time t equals zero. So I'm going to integrate from zero to t of d. I'm not going to use s this time. I guess I'll just use x, d dx e to the 1 over 25x times s dx. And then I'm going to integrate again from 0 to t, 200 e to the 1 over 25 times t. Or sorry, x dx. Okay. So when I do the antiderivative of the left-hand side, the antiderivative of the derivative is just the function itself. So I'm going to get e to the 1 over 25t times s of t minus, uh, let's see, e to the 0 times s of 0, which is s sub 0. Okay. Now I want to integrate the other side. Okay. So... Um, the antiderivative of 200e to the 1 over 25x is going to be 5,000, okay, dividing 200 by 1 25th, e to the 1 over 25x, evaluated between 0 and t. Okay, so we're going to get uh, e to the 1 over 25t times s of t equals, let's see, I'm going to put s0 on the other side, plus 5,000 e to the 1 over 25t minus 5,000. Okay. I'm going to probably, at this point, rearrange a couple of these things just to make it easier. I'm going to move this 5,000 over here, and then move this one over here, just so that uh, it's a little bit easier to work with, okay? So uh, I'm gonna divide by the E, so I'm gonna get S of T is going to be S zero minus 5,000, e to the 1 over minus 1 over 25t, because I'm dividing by e to the 1 over 25t, and then plus 5,000. And what we get is exactly what we expected to get. Okay, we expected to get uh, that we would have S0 minus 5,000. 5,000 in this case is our equilibrium solution. So S0 minus 5,000, E to the minus 1 over 25T plus our equilibrium solution of 5,000. Okay, so this is what we would have gotten if we had used our old method. Okay, 
Um, so this is our solution to the linear differential equation. And now we can ask questions like, well, what happens as t goes to infinity? Well, s of t, as t goes to infinity, the exponential is going to decay. And so s of t is going to go to 5,000 uh, pounds of salt, grams of salt, excuse me, 5,000 grams of salt. So uh, s of t goes to an equilibrium. So we can kind of think about uh, s here being 5,000, or the, the equilibrium being 5,000. And if I start below the equilibrium, okay, then it's going to go up to that equilibrium. And if I start above it, it's going to go down to the equilibrium. Okay, so we, so we have uh, that no matter what initial value S0 of salt that I start with, it's all going to go to an equilibrium value. And, and how it, did we get that equilibrium value? Okay, what is the equilibrium solution? S of t, okay? Well, it's uh, the, the equilibrium solution, right, is going to be uh, based on the, the mixture of salt. So if we go back to the mixture of salt, we were getting 50 grams per liter coming in. Okay, so it's going to be 50 grams per liter times 100 liters, okay, which gave us 5,000 grams, okay, and that is the equilibrium solution. So the equilibrium solution makes sense, okay. It is going to be the proportion of salt in the mixture times the volume of the tank. So we have the proportion of salt in the mixture, okay? And that's being multiplied by the volume of the tank, okay? And that ends up being uh, our equilibrium, okay? And so, so what we've done is, is we've solved this differential equation, but then we thought about uh, the meaning of our solution here, and it does make sense. Now, of course, we had other methods to solve this kind of problem, so we didn't need to use integrating factors, okay? But uh, I introduced this problem so I could introduce the next one in which we will need to use integrating factors, okay? So let's do what I call an advanced mixing problem, okay? S of t is going to be the amount of salt in a large tank that initially contains 100 liters of liquid. We're gonna pour in salt water containing 50 grams per liter of salt, like we did before, at a rate of four liters per minute. But a well-mixed solution of water is gonna drain out at a rate now of two liters per minute, okay? So four liters per minute are going in, two liters per minute are coming out. And so what's happening here is that we're gaining two liters per minute, okay? So if we're gaining two liters per minute, what's happening to the volume, we are starting at a volume of 100, and then we're gaining two liters per minute. Okay, so the volume is increasing from 100 uh, at a rate of two liters per minute. Okay, so volume is changing, okay? So what's gonna happen to our rate in minus our rate out? Our rate in is gonna be 50 uh, grams per liter times the four liters per minute. But now I'm gonna subtract, before I've subtracted the amount of salt, divided by the volume. The volume in this case is 2t plus 100. That was in grams per liter. And then I was multiplying that by, now the rate it's coming out, two liters per minute. So again, 
I'm just making sure the liters cancel. So I'm, I'm going in at a rate of grams per minute. And then the liters cancel here. I'm going out at a rate of grams per minute. Okay, so we're going in. Rate in is going to be constant rate 200 minus, okay, so I'm going to have S divided by, okay, so canceling that 2, it's going to be T plus 50. Okay, so I have something slightly different here. Okay, and what I've got is now a linear differential equation that doesn't have those constant coefficients, so I can't use some nice easy formula to solve it. So I have ds dt plus s over t plus 50 is equal to 200. And so I'm going to solve this again using integrating factors. So I have a mu of t, which is going to be e to the antiderivative of the coefficient of s. Coefficient of s is going to be 1 over t plus 50. Okay. So when I anti-differentiate, I'm going to get e to the natural log of t plus 50. The e and the natural log cancel, so I'm just going to get t plus 50. It's going to multiply both sides by t plus 50. So I'm going to get t plus 50 ds dt plus s is going to equal 200 times t plus 50. I'm going to rewrite this using a product rule. So d dt of mu, which is t plus 50, times s is going to equal, now I'm going to multiply this out. So 200t plus, and it looks like 20, 200 times 50 is 10,000. Okay, so Okay, so I want to anti-differentiate both sides. So I'm going to do t plus 50 times s of t is going to equal, okay, let's do 200, or sorry, I'm going to anti-differentiate the other side. So I'm going to get 100 t squared plus 10,000 plus C. Okay. 10,000 T plus C. Now, uh, we could go ahead and solve for S of T, but I'm actually going to, at this point, because it's going to be a lot easier, I'm going to plug in the initial condition. So here the initial condition is going to be that s of 0 equals s sub 0. So if I plug that in, that tells me that 50 s 0 is going to equal c. So that gives me the initial condition. So s of t now that I solve is going to be 100 t squared plus 10,000 t plus 50 s 0 divided by t plus 50, okay? And I should note that this only exists when t is bigger than 50, because we can't, or sorry, negative 50. We can't have t bigger than uh, we can't have t less than negative 50 in this case. So that is my solution. Now I encourage you to maybe pick um, pick a uh, S0 and then plug this in and, and look at what happens uh, graphically uh, as t increases. Okay, so what happens as t goes to infinity. Um, but what I want you to see here is, is that we have a quadratic on top and a linear function t plus 50 on the bottom. Okay, so as t gets larger and larger, what happens is, is that s increases linearly. 
okay? So if you start to zoom out on the graph of this, what you're gonna see is that it starts with kind of a curve to it, but eventually it just starts to look like a line and it S is gonna increase linearly, okay? So in this case, the amount of salt in the tank is gonna increase linearly, 